Greetings, everybody. It's Jim, and today we're talking about a special kind of programmed adventure. Now, we all know programmed adventures for the most part, right? You get a descriptive paragraph of what's going on in the adventure, and beneath said paragraph are a number of choices that you get to make. Paragraph A, I mean, choice A will take you to paragraph 15, choice B will take you to paragraph 60, and so on and so on, etc., etc., right? But this kind of programmed adventure turns all that on its head, and it's called a hex crawl. And you've probably heard the term before, and if you haven't, I guarantee you, if you've been playing any fantasy RPGs for any length of time, you've already been playing one. Uh, most likely on a console if you don't know what one is, okay? On a, on a PC or something like that. But what a hex crawl is, is you use a map like this that you're seeing on the right, and you go from point A, and you're trying to reach point B or find some kind of objective while you're trying traveling around the map. It's just RPG playing 101. The only difference is with a hex crawl it is definitely suited for, for solitaire play, but also for multiplayer play as well. It can be used as a regular campaign. All right, and this module that I'm going to be showing you here, this adventure, definitely suits all of that. So today I'm going to be talking to you about why you should be using Master of Amulets from Metagaming. Okay, now I know what you're saying. You're probably saying, Jim, I really do want to know what a Master of Amulets is all about, but why entice me? The only way I'm going to be able to play is if I get on eBay and buy this for a crazy amount of money, like 50 bucks plus, right? So what's the point? Well, there's good news at the end of all this. See, the thing is, even though this is not part of Steve Jackson's legacy, he doesn't own the copyrights or the rights to it at all. It's still probably under Howard Thompson's, right? Uh, but the thing is, it was made by, uh, created by Mike Monastero. And the thing is, and here's the silver lining. Uh, he definitely put his own ideas in here, which is good, but the hex crawl itself is very basic. It is easily, uh, you know, copied and just uh, changed to make it your own, as a matter of fact, um, to suit your campaign. It's something that can be easily done, quite honestly. It's no different than, um, you know, if you take what's in here, you it's, it's no more than uh, stocking a dungeon at the end of the day, really. Um, so let's get on with what this is all about. Uh, Durengar was the black Black Council's most powerful wizard, and yet he wanted more, don't they all? Uh, he created cursed amulets for his enemies and mystic amulets for himself. When Durengar activated the Great Amulet, he'd gain power over all, kind of like a Lord of the Rings kind of thing there going on. But the Black Council's conjuring exploded the Great Amulet, scattering the lesser amulets across Durengar's Lost Valley. A uh, legend holds that Durengar's mystic amulets may still be sought um, by the brave or the foolish, and it is, it is even said that Durengar's gates can be controlled and the valley's entrance gained by his amulets. The brave may seek, the clever find, and the lucky escape. Power awaits. Will you find it, and can you take it? So that is the idea of Master of Amos. Let's take a look at the map and see how this plays out. All right, so here we are back at the map here, and the idea of the game is, of course, you're on the bottom where it says enter in the valley. How you get there is uh, up to the game master. It could be a faulty gate. Uh, you could have touched the Loch Nahr. Who the hell knows? But bottom line is you are in this area, and you can't get out until you find the return amulet, and there's only one of them out of the 24, and make your way to the exit up top. OK, now, of course, the X's are on the map are where all the amulets are and they're scattered around and it's different every time uh, it, they do reset. So these amulets never leave the valley. Every time somebody new comes in, they all scatter around again. OK, of course, that makes it for playability, replayability. Uh, and it's an interesting story nonetheless. Um, but it also adds the, the luck factor in there because sometimes you can get better amulets than others because some of them are cursed and some aren't. Uh, but one thing of note, uh, what I like about this game is it definitely rewards movement allowance okay so your lighter characters because here's what happens every day that you move and on average you can you get about you know you get your movement allowance uh, on the board but of course uh, anything like a uh, a forest is going to take up two points. Uh, some hills will take up two mountains, three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and it, it goes by the the movement allowance of the least uh, the character with the least amount of points. So as you can imagine, uh, you are going to roll every day for encounters. Now the thing is, it doesn't just happen on a one on a d6. That'd be one thing. It's one or a two on a d6. Thirty-three percent of the time, every day, you are encountering something. 
Okay, that is a big deal. So now it really makes movement all that much uh, more important. So if you can actually have one character that might be only going six, might be wearing plate or chainmail, now you're tempted to say, why do you wear leather and just give us those extra two points of movement so we can get around the map just that much quicker. OK, because one of the things that is true, um, you cannot cross the river unless it's at a bridge, unless you have an amulet that allows you to fly. OK, um, maybe a little bit of a spoiler there, but it's just the, the only way. So as you can see, there's only one way that you can get off the, up on the river is up the top. And then you got to kind of wiggle down to the other bridge that's on the other side. So it's really you're really moving from left up and down, left to right. But the longer you stay there, again, 33% every day that you're going to encounter something, not that you have to always fight, but chances are you're going to. And in this game, uh, he, there is no cities. You cannot find healing potions very easily. Um, it is pretty rough. So you're going to want to get out as quickly as possible. So you have to actually judge whether you want more armor because you are going to fight a lot or you're not going to want a lot of armor so you cannot roll as many encounters so it's pretty interesting on that note okay so since the game's called master of amulets let's figure out what the amulets are all about right as i said there's 24 amulets and there's 18 of them that are regular amulets uh, lettered a through r and they are both blessed and cursed and then there are six special amulets uh, labeled X1 through X6. Now, why they say X1 through X6, not just one to six, I can't say I know, <laughs> uh, but that's what they did. And there's two counters for X1 through X6. One of them goes on the map, uh, you know, jumbled with everyone else. You don't know where they are. And then just for to be placed on the side. So there's X1 through X6 on the side. And what that's for is because there's six other counters uh, that say the powers of those amulets and they're mixed up. And those powers are placed underneath those nomenclatures for those amulets, right? So that's different every game. Because the thing is, unlike the regular amulets where you, as soon as you find one, you know what they do. Uh, the X amulets, you actually have to roll against four IQ, four dice against IQ to be able to figure out what they are. And if you don't, well, there's only two things to do. One is to find another regular amulet that will decipher one of those amulets or test your luck, get to the exit and say, I hope this is the return amulet because one of those six are the return amulet. And if you do, you're out. And if not, it kind of explodes and does one dice damage to everybody. <laughs> Uh, so a lot of and I can see a lot of stress uh, happening with that decision uh, in some cases because one of the things about this game also is because you're you're encountering so many uh, creatures so fast and there's so little healing. It's not like there's civilizations around here that you can heal at. You're all you know you're on your own and you can heal one point per two days as normal. But if you're sitting around, I don't know. I, the way I read it is you still have to roll for encounters every day. It didn't say that you know if you stayed in one spot you could just stay there that would make sense you could just heal up with no problem so yeah you're rolling every day still and with 33 percent chance of an encounter it's not really worth the while to try to heal you're going to lose more points than you would ever uh encounter unless you got really really lucky so where the return amulet is when there's one of 24 scattered about the place is really going to dictate how well your adventure is going to go and now the thing is um, with the map, one other point about the map is there is only one real path if you don't find another amulet that helps you uh, move around the place a little bit. Okay, and there are amulets that let you do that. But without finding those, if you don't get lucky enough to find them, uh, the only way to cross the rivers or by the bridges is you can see on the upper left, the first river, that's you have to go all the way up there to cross. Then the second one, there's no other bridge until you go all the way to the right. So you're taking this really long way to get there. And if you are really unlucky and along the way you don't find your return amulet that means you're backtracking uh it can be a real doozy now hopefully you found some other amulets that might make moving over those rivers a little and anywhere else for that matter a little bit easier but you know at the same time you can probably get hosed real bad with some configurations i mean obviously i think um there's an optimal path to go every single time but that might that that path would change depending on the amulets that you get now, I know I talked a lot of doom and gloom with the 33% uh, encounter rate, but the truth is it's not always that bad because you do get a chance to negotiate with uh, 
everybody beforehand. Now, everybody has a negotiation value. All the, all the creatures do. Uh, whether it's a six, meaning it's like a, an animal that you can't parlay with, really, or a one, which is like a group of fighters who don't want to be there in the first place, right? Um, they'll be a little bit easier to deal with. Um, but what you do is you roll 2d6, and then you cross-reference with the negotiation value, and then you get a result. Um, and of course, uh, they're all over the place here. They're not clumped up. So I guess I seen that in Ragnarok. Normally, I would think these would be clumped up with the most common results like um you know six through eight or something like that all in one and then the, the outliers would be at the ends which they kind of still are but i think that i seen this in spi's ragnarok when they're spread out like all this they're actually trying to go for a certain percentage every time so it's pretty interesting but anyway an n stands for neutral no big deal you just fight as normal S stands for stop. You catch them flat-footed and you get a free turn and a free attack. They don't do anything for a turn. F stands for flee. They run away, which is great. And then R stands for rage. It's the worst one. You don't want that one at all. They get a plus. I think they get a, I know they get a plus two damage, but I think they get a plus one attack as well. Uh, you know, plus one DX for the for the for the entire battle, and that can be some bad news. So you really do want to watch it. Uh, animals five or six, you really don't want to worry about. You're just gonna you're just gonna get them pissed off. It's all you're gonna do. So generally, save that for the fighters and wizards that de definitely abound in this valley. One thing that I appreciate about the classic. The fantasy trip is the idea that they use the melee and wizard maps pretty exclusively, okay, as much as they could. They didn't try to make, say, make some wild uh, configuration of a room and stuff. It's not like nowadays where we have those great mega hexes that we can just go ahead and fit together in all kinds of configurations. Um, before, um, the only way you could do that is if you got, you made them your on your own, or you got the advanced uh, melee or advanced wizard uh, classic, which had them that you could photocopy and cut out. That would take a lot of work. Not everybody was going to have that or the technology available at the time to actually do that easily. So this was definitely the way to go. So in this, um, you, this is an option. I just played off the regular melee, but you could definitely play this where um, if you're in a certain biome, you would actually set these uh, these situations up. And there was a, there's a few of them. There's like four different types. And I thought that was pretty cool. So another thing about Master of Ambulance that I thought was pretty cool, and I wouldn't necessarily like this in any other setting maybe, but it scales to the number of um, adventurers in the party. So in other words, you start with five adventurers and then you roll up an encounter for fighters while well, you're going to encounter five fighters. If three of your characters get killed off and you only got two left and you roll up fighters again, you're only going to fight two fighters. So the good thing is that that makes it so you can actually try to still finish the game and make it while as opposed to something like Death Test where if you lose two fighters, uh, unless some kind of small miracle happens and luck goes your way, uh, you're pretty much toast right um but another thing about that that i thought was pretty cool is that made it so maybe you can do the whole horror movie campaign right um you know, you, you might start with 10 characters even. Make them all 32 points and you're just trying to get out alive. You know some of them are going to die. But at the same time, now you can almost go through the entire island and then you have a really great story of the two survivors that actually made it. Uh, so I actually see, you know, this whole point of this adventure is to make a story of who actually makes it out the valley alive. Now, mind you, the story of the valley, like I said, it resets itself all the time. People find themselves in there. It's a, just a big legend of the guy. But you could just make it a one-off, or you can actually have people want to try to find their way back. All kinds of reasons. I really like that about this adventure. Now, I had a really good week of fantasy trip this uh, week, actually. I mean, I started the week off um, with teaching some new people how to play. And they weren't – they were they played board games, but they aren't like aficionados. So you could see the wheels turning in their mind, you know, as opposed to teaching some advanced gamers, you know. It's totally different. And you could just see the light bulbs going on, uh, you know, while it might be old hat for some other uh, veteran gamers. So it was cool. But I also got to play – 
two uh, of Masters of Master of Amulets, and two games of Orb Quest, which is going to be my next video. I had a lot of fun with that too. Um, but definitely, what helped me was just having it on, you know, an undisturbed place where I could play, have it set up. Uh, I try to my 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 goal is always once I play and I feel like I want to take a break because some of these battles can, as you know, in the fantasy trip can be very involved. Um, what I do is I just keep on rolling until I get to a fight. And then I leave it on that cliffhanger. I say, I set up the fight. I say, it's ready to go whenever I'm ready. And then when I got, I know I got an hour or so, I can go back and play a game. And that's really nice. It's motivating. I, but luckily, I just, you know, I had the weekend. So, I mean, I didn't have to stop. But I did that with Car Wars, you know, my video about Car Wars. That was 60 turns. I just did like two turns at a time. Every so often, I go back to work, take a break, do two more turns, go back to work. You know, it, it was kind of nice. So, if you have any way to make that happen in your life, I highly recommend it. But that's the video for Master of Amulets. Orb Quest is next and I'll see you next video.